Whoa! Are we excited to be in groups today? Yeah. Whoa! And I love seeing your faces and no masks. I love that. So if you had the cho- I have a question for you. If you had the choice between having consistent leads and you know the leads are coming in, but you're not making that much income, or you had the choice between making massive amounts of money, but not really knowing if you're gonna get those leads, which one would you choose? In today's workshop, we're gonna teach you how you can have both, the best of both worlds, regardless of the economy. Okay, I've been coaching for collectively 18 years. I've had the opportunity to work with literally thousands of coaches and business owners, and I wanna share you everything I've learned, and I'd have to be deaf, dumb, blind, and stupid to not see that there's a pattern that stops people from creating what I call that it life. And what I mean by that it life is influence, income and time freedom who wants that raise your hand yeah i mean if you don't want that i mean you're in the wrong room or the backyard or whatever right so we're gonna have some fun so when i first met josh can i tell you what i was really thinking when i first met josh yes (laughs) when i first met josh i was like oh look at this dude his shoes tight pants tight shirt dude this guy's a tool tool the two man tailor yeah my kind of boy <laughs> my wife calls me a, a tool all the time i was like I'm, it's like it's not a tool i'm a power to screwdriver nope we got power screwdriver right we got power saw i'm all the tools in the toolbox i get shit done right babe <laughs> yeah, we're, we're power tools. We're not regular tools. Um, anyways, we we were at the first engagement, and when I really like became a fan of Josh, as we were out to lunch. I don't know if he remembers this, um, but this guy walked up, and you can tell that he was really struggling. He might have even been homeless, and uh, everyone's just kind of sitting there, and everyone I felt like in that room was judging him a little bit. And Josh, and Josh took the time to go over there and sit with this dude for 15 minutes and talk to him and just make him feel loved and appreciated for who he was. And as soon as I saw Josh do that, I was like, that's the type of people I want to be with. The type of people that aren't going to judge someone else based upon how they look, what their title is where they're from, someone that's just gonna look people in the eyes and give them true love and appreciation. And so I strive to be more like Josh every single day. Just so you know, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get teary eyed here because, because like really dude, you, you inspire me, man. Yeah, so can we give it up for Josh one more time? So, Let's talk for a second. Who's, who's from Utah? Raise your hand. We're all my Utah people. Yeah. Who's uh, from Ar- my Arizonians? Is that what we call it? Arizonians or physicians? Phoenicians. Yeah. No, does anyone call it Arizonians? I definitely do. Yeah. You definitely do? I was yeah. like, I refer to Arizonian physicians, I guess. Where, is there a difference? Is there a battle between? No, I'm, I mean, unless there's a battle now. No. <laughs> Shit, I just, I just created one. <laughs> the physicians versus the Arizonians. Um, yeah, so why, why are you here? Why did you come here today? What were you hoping to walk away with? Um, I'm really excited. So a little bit about me. I first started coaching right out of high school, age of 19. So that's why I've been in this industry for, for so long. And uh, the thing that was always important to me um, when I was in high school, you know, how we were in high school, like, who am I going to be when I'm going to grow up? What am I going to do? And the thing that was always important to me is I wanted to have fun. I wanted to really enjoy what I was doing and not be a slave to the dollars. Anyone feel that same way? Yeah, you wanna really enjoy how you're making your money versus how much money you're making. And so that was important to me. And um, I jumped in, I had no idea what I was doing. I made $22,000 my first year. I worked really hard the second year, made 24,000. Then I was like, fuck it, we're going all out. We're gonna work really hard, we're gonna kill it. And then the very next year, I made $26,000. Raise the roof, right? <laughs> okay. And I began in one of the best times to start your business in, in Goo Coaching, which was uh, t- 2007. What happened in 2008, Sam? 
Lots of opportunity came our way. <laughs> Lots of opportunity came our way. And I love that answer and I love the way Sam thinks. And the way I was thinking at that time is I didn't see it and I got sucked into the current. I got sucked into it rather than going along with it. And so uh, I went out on my own, failed miserably. I actually lost money, ended up working down at my dad's body shop. He uh, works on auto cars. And it was a really humbling experience because here I am with a bachelor's degree and I'm digging trenches for $10 an hour in my dad's shop in the middle of July, having to take breaks every 10 minutes because it's so hot. And you guys are probably laughing at me. It's like, you don't even fucking know hot. You know, you Utahns don't even know hot. It was a hundred. It was like a hundred and five, which I know is probably like your average when you wake up in the morning, right? Wasn't that hot? And so, uh, it was. It was really embarrassing to go to your bachelor party, um, where you got your degree, and tell people you're working at the shop, you know, for for ten dollars an hour, and um, finally got a break at this top level facility, and it was one of those things where it's just like, <sighs> all right, I made it, like. Things are gonna be better now. Well, first week I didn't get one client. Second week I didn't get another client. Third week I didn't get another client. And after four weeks of not getting a client, you start to doubt yourself. This is the third time failing now. What evidence do I really have to support that I can actually do this? I looked out in the world, well, I'm not as good looking as some of those people, I'm not as in shape. I don't feel like I'm the brightest color in the coloring box, right? And I just, I'm struggling, I'm beating myself up. And one night I was like, I'm done, I can't handle this anymore. So I drove home and on the way home, I stopped at my mom's house because my mom was my rock. Does anyone have a rock that they go to in their life when it's hard? Who, who's your rock, man? My dad. Your dad? Yeah. For me, it was my mom. So on the way home, I stopped at my parents' house and I walked into my mom's room and I just fell on the bed. And your dad knows when something's up, right? You can see it in your eyes, Kenny. Yeah. And my mom can see it in my eyes. And she said, what's wrong? And I just started crying. I was like, how come no one wants to work with me? How come I'm not good enough? And I started crying. Because I was so hurt and so upset. I couldn't handle the heartbreak anymore. And she said something to me in that moment that I'll never forget. And I hope these words mean just as much to you as they do me. But she said in that moment, the world needs you. You have helped so many people in your life. You can't give up now. And I will say the same thing to you. The world needs you more so than ever before, guys. And the biggest problem right now is you're just not seen enough. You're just not heard enough. It's not that you're not good enough, it's that you're not putting in enough of the right work and you're not putting enough of the hard work to make it work. And so it was a point where it's like, do I, do I give in? Do I, do I choose into this wimpy ass bullshit attitude that I can't make it? Or do I really put my foot in the ground and said, no, I'm gonna figure out how to make this work. And the very next week, I end up getting a client and two years ago, he reached out and he's like, dude, I just want to thank you so much for helping me because you have no idea where I was at. And I was like, no, dude, you don't know where I was at. I was ready to quit. And that's what I love about what we get to do. We get to change lives. We get to create influence. And we also get to create an amazing income at the same time. How cool is that? Regardless of what business you're in, we all get to change lives or affect lives. Okay? Mr. Munchies is what I call him. They have a yogurt place up in Salt Lake. And they change lives. They get to celebrate with people who come in to get, yo to get yogurt. So we all get to help people in various ways. And the thing that we have to keep remembering and the thing that has gotten me through all these tough times is we've got to remember what's important at the end of the day. And what's important is really serving. And when we lose our self in service, that's what's going to help. And the reason why I failed, when I look back, I, I wasn't humble. I was, I was, I was kind of cocky. I wasn't, I wasn't being humble. I thought I knew everything. I wasn't open. I wasn't being a good follower. 
and that energy was putting out to the world and it was pushing everybody away. And when I finally just opened myself up, opened my heart and said, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. And that's when I started to get answers. And today you came here for answers. And I'm going to tell you that if you came here for answers today, you're in the wrong event. Okay? You're not looking for answers. You're looking for better questions. Because the answers you receive will only be as good as the questions you ask. So what questions do you need, what questions do you need to ask? So I want you to get out your notebooks, the paper that you got. So we're gonna walk you through this book. We're gonna kind of jump around a little bit through your guys' workbooks, but we're gonna walk through your entire business today. But the very start, okay, um, step number one, okay, it should be at the very first, we're talking about your mindset. So let me see this for a second. So yeah, thank you. So we're gonna flip to, let's see what page it is. Is it 14? We're gonna to flip to page 11, okay? And what questions do you need to ask in each one of these? Okay, what are the questions you need to ask? So I want you guys to take about a minute and I want you to write, what do you need to know? What are the questions that you need to ask? What do you wanna walk away with? So we'll take about a minute, two minutes and start filling that out. Thank you. Appreciate that. How would I go about developing my brand? I did. Um, how? Like, I feel like I'm really good at leadership, but my confidence is not there. Obviously, I hear social media a lot, but you know, it doesn't help. And then, how to arrange like more people, the more that that creates some sort of relationships. Um, I need to set clear expectations of my own, and I make sure that I don't have to be on social media. Even though the assemblance is internalizing that, while I'm posting, like, I mean, as the reason why I'm posting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I am just okay, kind of I want to see where I am. I feel like I'm really good as far as, like, people recognize their neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. What's the shirt? Yeah. How to do sales without being salesy. Holy shit. Has that, has that stopped anyone in the room? Holy hell. Yep, that's me for sure. Yeah, why do you think I struggled for so long, okay? I hated sales, okay? Because I didn't want to push people into something that they didn't want to do. I felt weird, right? Who wants to learn how to do that? Yeah, good question. What else? What else did we share? Or heard that was a good question. Awesome. Who wants to be a better leader for their business and their team? Cool, what are some good questions that we got? I'll share. If you had 100 clients come to you right now, who would want 100 clients? Raise your hand. Who would want 100 clients? Okay, who can handle 100 clients? Raise your hand. Oh, maybe there's the problem. Maybe that we can't handle what we really want. Okay, cool, so how to make your brand more memorable, right? Cool, yeah, so I started asking myself these questions, okay? And at corporate, it was no longer serving me because it held me back from the things I wanna do. I wanted to go speak it corporate events. I wanted to have my own podcast. I want to do all these things. And does corporate frown upon these things or smile upon these things? Frown. Usually frown, right? They want to stick in a box. And so me, I, I like being free. My freedom is the thing that's most important to me. When I married my wife, I was like, two things. Let me be me, okay? Let me be free. <laughs> don't, try to hold, don't try to hold me in this box, okay? That's, those were my things, okay? So I started asking myself the question. So I went out on my own, which was so scary for me because the only evidence I had was failing. The first time I went out on my own, I crashed and failed, didn't know how to market and didn't do all these things. But within three months, I was making more money in one month than I was in three months working at that job. And my mind just went, holy crap, I can't believe I did this. And then it just continued to grow and grow. I started doing events. I broke six figures, started climbing and climbing. And the game changing thing that happened, I hired a coach and she was taking me through this process. And at this time I was working with my clients, personal training, nutrition coaching. And she took me through this mindset process that literally just freed me freed my mind, it helped me get over some things that I'd been holding on to a long time. And after she took me through it, I was like, wow, this is 
this is different. This is unique. This is this is innovative. This is next gen. Like no one else is doing this. Why why wasn't I taught this in school? Why didn't I learn any of this in my certifications? Why why weren't they teaching me how to break through people's mind? set that hold them back from really doing the things that they want so they can have the results that they want in their life. So I dedicated all my energy to learning these things. And so my personal training business went to more of confidence coaching and identity coaching because that's really what the problem was is people just weren't in alignment to have the results that they wanted. They wanted to drop weight, but they still saw themselves as that skinny boy or that fat girl. And that's how they identified themselves. So it wasn't the fact that they didn't necessarily know how to eat and not know how to make it to the gym. It's just the fact that their identity and who they believe they were at the core level wasn't in alignment with what they were trying to do. So I went in all in on doing that and learning that. And I had other personal trainers, nutritionists come to me, man, how are you doing this? How are you making money in this? So I found a new love coaching these other personal trainers. And as I started coaching these other personal trainers, what I realized is, man, they have the same exact problem just in a different way as these clients I was working with. They don't have the identity of their business solidified. And the identity of your business is your brand. That's your core. And if you don't have that identity and that belief around your business, then you're gonna struggle in what to do. And if you're struggling what to do, you're gonna struggle in what you have. So I had, so I started really focusing on the branding and that's what we do today. We do branding, mentoring. My wife does marketing. Uh, Frank does the digital online. So we built this amazing team, all helping people get the tools that they need to go to the next level of their business. And I call it next gen coaching. Next Gen is innovative, it's different, it's unique. And I believe each and every single one of you here today, you have something unique about you. You have something different. You're uniquely you and no one can match that. And I feel like when you're owning you and you're owning that identity and who you are, you are the best in the world at what you do. And so my goal today is to show you how fucking influential you really are to show you how big of a badass you really are to show you what you could really accomplish when you really dive down to the root and develop that brand and develop the marketing and create everything in alignment okay who wants to do that raise your hand who wants to do that come on raise your hand okay we're here today to win okay who played sports growing up raise your hand Awesome. CJ, what, what sports did you play? Baseball. Baseball. Dude, that's my man right there. That's why we're hanging out right now. <laughs> what, what position did you play? Uh, kind of very. I grew up playing a lot of outfield and first base. First base. Yeah, I can see that. Tall dude. Catch my overthrows from third base. <laughs> so I grew up playing sports, baseball, uh, basketball, football. Um, I love sports. We actually created a podcast called Next Gen Sports where I talk about sports and how it applies to a lot of these high performance mindsets that we have. Um, uh, I grew up always being outdoors and doing things. Um, I'm always staying active. I actually, this year's uh, been really tough for me because I felt kind of squandered inside and I am very, I have a lot of extrovert energy. So I love to be around people and this is why I love to hold events is because I be, get to be around a lot of people. Um, I'm a Trump supporter. Do I have any Trump supporters in here? Okay, and to be honest with you, I don't really give a shit what you believe, Trump or Biden, okay? What I believe at the end of the day is regardless of who's president of the United States, not changing what I do. It's not changing who I'm gonna become. It's not changing what I'm doing in business, okay? Who agrees with that? Raise your hand. Okay, perfect, okay? Then you're my type of person, okay? Uh, I'm pro guns, okay? I have a mouth on me and I promise my intention is not to offend any of you here today, okay? My intention is to help you and I speak very openly and truthfully about what I've been through because I feel like the main problem that happens in this world is that 
especially in business, is we're not being told like what really happens. We're kind of been told what I feel like this this lullaby story, this fantasy of what we can create, and then we go out into the real world, get our ass kicked, and then we go, well, what's my problem? How come I can't do this? Has anyone ever felt like that before? Oh, how come I'm not creating the results that these other people are? They made a million dollars in a year. They made $100,000 with one webinar. How come I'm not creating that result? Okay, do you want me to share why? Do you want us to learn why? Okay, so I want to share a formula with you guys. Okay, and that's the formula we're going to be going over today. So the first thing we focus on is the brand. Okay, so we got to build the brand. That's where it all starts. Then from the brand, it's going to transition down into how we're marketing. And then from the marketing, okay, we need to make sure that we have our sales process down. And the thing of it is, guys, you sell someone every single day. You sell your spouse on where you go to eat. You sell your friends on where you go, what movie you watch. Every single day you're selling. Okay, true or false? True. true. Okay, you're selling every single day. Okay, you just associate that the fact that you receive money, now it's considered bad. Okay, so we're going to break through some limiting beliefs here today because if you guys don't break through some of this shit, it's going to hold you back and it's going to not only affect you, but it's going to affect the people that you can help in this world. Okay, and then after we put together the sales process, okay, we make sure that we got our services in alignment and that's what's going to create that it life. Does that sound good? Simple, we got it on paper, it's easy, it feels really good, right? Yes. You wanna know what really happens? You wanna know what really happens? Here's what really happens, guys. Okay, step one. You're gonna dream about it, and you're gonna talk about it. Wouldn't that be cool if we yeah. put together an event? <laughs> Yeah, that would be really awesome. Oh, I got a million dollar idea. Here's what we're gonna do, okay? Oh, this webinar, oh my gosh. We're gonna launch it and everyone's gonna buy my product. Ooh, as soon as I put an ad cart on my website, I'm gonna wake up with sales, right? Okay, what I call it is inspirational masturbating. We're just <laughs> masturbating on that thought. Oh, 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 oh. I need something to eat now. <laughs> and who knows what I'm talking about? We've all done it. We've all done it. We talk about how cool it is and how fun it would be to do an event or a retreat or write our book or do a podcast. But do we do it? Well, yes, after a while we go, okay, I guess I got to put together my brand. So we put together our brand. We develop our marketing strategy, okay? And then after we put our marketing strategy together, we suck at it. <laughs> but it's not working the way Travis said it would work. It's hard. Yes, you have to suck at it. The problem is you're not sucking enough. I call it the baby analogy. Who's, who has kids? Who has kids? So we have a five month. Okay, when you first have a baby, what do they do? Cry, what else? Sleep. Poop, sleep, what else? Cry, eat, okay. Here, you're, when you're first starting something new, guys, you're in the infancy. You're, you're a newborn. You're gonna cry, you're gonna suck, you're gonna shit up the place. It's gonna stink. You're gonna go to bed, you're gonna sleep it off, you're gonna consume some more, and you're gonna get better at it. Yeah. Okay, so as soon as you suck at it, okay, you're gonna start to doubt yourself though. Man, is this really what I should be doing? Am I really good enough to be a speaker? Am I really good enough to put out a podcast? Am I really good enough to do these things? Yeah. Has these ever entered your mind before, guys? Man, it still enters my mind. 
Okay, so I know it enters everyone else's mind. But what happens is you're going to be inspired. Someone's going to call you up. Someone's going to text you. You're going to go to a place and something's going to inspire you of why you started in the first place. You're going to be reminded of why you're on this journey. You're going to remember why you did this in the first place. And after you're inspired, you're going to look at that example. You're going to look at that inspiration. And then you're going to look inside yourself and you're going, how can I make it better? How can I evolve this? Ooh, it'd be cool if I added this. It'd be cool if we changed this. And you're going to make it next gen. You're going to take something that's already been created. You're going to evolve it. You're going to grow it. You're going to make it part of you. And you're going to create something that no one else has created. And then after you do that, you're going to attempt again. Nine, you're going to realize you need more help than you do. And then, ten, you're going to realize that, man, I actually do need to focus on my sales process. I need to get over my limiting beliefs. When I sit down with someone who's struggling in their business and they talk about why they're struggling, I'm counting words and the words I'm counting is I'm counting I. I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't want to sound salesy. I this, I that, I, 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 I. All selfish reasons. Okay, focus on who you're serving. Replace your I's with your U's. Okay, you want a tip, you want one tip today that will make this entire workshop worth it. Start changing your posts from less eyes and more U's. Okay, less eyes, more U's. Okay, that'll change your marketing game just that by itself. Okay, start talking to people more. It's not about I, it's about you. So when you start realizing that your blocks is because you're so focused on yourself, You'll realize that now as you start focusing on other people, this is where you'll start converting. And when you're doing that, you're creating that it life. It's not the strategy. It's how you work the strategy. If you want the strategy to work, you have to work. If you want the strategy to work faster, you have to work faster. Okay? If the strategy is not working the way you want, you need to change the way you're working the strategy. And so that's the biggest problem that I see is people these give you, this strategy has brought me all these leads, this strategy has brought me all this money, and I, and I promise you the strategy works, any strategy will work. But what they don't tell you is this. It's how you work and evolve the strategy. And that's the tough part. That's the hard part is how you evolve it. Okay, how you change it. What do you do when you come across the problem? Everyone has a different block. Everyone has a different problem. Okay, you can't get past the problem. Okay, you might know all this stuff, behind the problem, but you can't specifically get past the problem. Okay, so we're gonna identify some of those key things, and as we go throughout these workshop, you're gonna see some of the things that are blocking you when it comes to getting the results that you really want. Okay, you guys came here for marketing, and you're gonna get marketing, but what we gotta realize is that everything around the marketing is what makes the marketing awesome. Okay? The brand supports the marketing, okay? What's branding? What is branding? Does anyone have a definition for that? Branding's tough, isn't it? Yeah, and the reason why it's tough is because how do we really tell people what a brand is? 
Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to be diving to a very deep unconscious level about what is branding? How do we really grow our brand? Okay, marketing. Okay, we're going to dive into that. Minky's going to come up here in a second and she's going to give you a, an amazing formula, an amazing philosophy that if you apply in your business, it's going to have massive influence and income for you. Okay, we're going to go through your sales process a little bit later today. Who wants to improve their sales process? Okay, to feel authentic, real, genuine, loving. Who wants all those things? Okay, promise you the will. Okay, services. How do we automate those? How do we scale? I asked you guys a question a second ago. How many people want a hundred clients? Everyone raise their hand. How many of them can handle a hundred clients? Oh, yeah. So how do we build our processes to start automating that so we can create that time freedom that we really want? Okay, so that's what we're going to be going through today. Does that sound fun? Yes. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> okay. So what I want you guys to do now is we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to the thing I just gave you a second ago is what are the questions you need to ask? Okay. Let's go back to that. What are the questions you need to ask? So go back to that assignment. Okay. What are the questions that I need to ask? more of. Okay, so we'll take about one more minute and then we'll bring up Minky here in a second. And also maybe where you're struggling at. I'm struggling here. Okay, here's where I'm struggling at right now. Okay, and here's the main things. Looking at our brand, looking at our marketing, sales process services. So if you're struggling, it's usually one of these four areas where we just haven't dialed it down enough. Who's in the coaching industry of some sort? Raise your hand. Coaching industry of some sort. Raise your hand. Raise them high so I can see them. Raise them high. Cool. All right. Who's, who's speaking or wants to speak? Raise your hand. Awesome. Who's in finances? Finances of some level. Wealth building, some level. Cool. Tell me what you do, man. I'm also part of this team over here. Okay, awesome. Cool. Dude, I love that shirt, dude. I really want one of those shirts. Sure, is it? Okay, totally. Can <laughs> <laughs> you sign it, though? Okay, thanks. CJ? Yeah, we're the Sam. Sam, okay, awesome. All right, um, what, who's in uh, some type of product of some sorts? Okay, product. We got yogurt. Tell us what. Cosmetics. Cosmetics, okay, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a very strange product. I'm a performer. And so I'm trying to, I'm a stilt walker. Uh -huh. So I go to events and, but I don't have, it. my product is me. Yes. So I guess you could say I have a product, but that's where, you know, it's like one of my questions is, do I need another product, you know, to represent? Okay. Or is my product just me? Okay. You know, that's, services. Yep. It's, it would be a, yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah, re regardless of what industry you're at, okay, what we're talking about today is going to directly correlate to your business. I promise you that, regardless of what industry that you're in. Um, before we bring up Minky, I want to uh, thank some people. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Alona. Can we have Alona stand up? Can we give her a round of applause? You have no idea what this woman goes through to make this event happen. Uh, she's behind the scenes. Um, she does so much and, uh, she really jumped in to fill a spot at the last second to make all this happen. So give her another round of applause for making all this happen. Okay. Can we give it up for our video team? Can we give up for our video team? Yeah. Cool. My man, Frank, can we give Frank a round of applause? You're going to hear from him later today. Okay. He's a digital strategist, web designer. 
Okay, and then uh, can I have uh, all of the next gen current clients stand up? Can we have our current clients go ahead and stand up? Can we give them a round of applause? Woo! Yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, and then lastly, but the most importantly, for me anyways, is uh, my wife. Um, when she met me, um, one thing I told her is this is so important, like my business is so important. She's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I was like, no, this is, this is really important to me. And she um, puts herself probably, um, she, she sacrifices her own time and herself sometimes for doing these things because I'm just so bullheaded at time. And what I do love is she does love and su supports everything that she does. She's so incredibly smart. She makes me um, a better man. Um, she's the mom to my son and to watch what she's been through in the last year has been incredible and has given me more strength, especially when I'm like holding her hair as she's puking in the bathroom. I'm like, shit. If, if Ken, if we had to have kids, it wouldn't happen, dude. The human race would become extinct, <laughs> right? So um, I'm so thankful for her. She's so incredibly gifted. And I don't just say that because she's my wife. She is fucking good at what she does, marketing and graphic designs. And uh, I just.